Exploring the rooms of the Lucknow Mansion, you're likely to hear about the original furniture and learn that many of the small items, though period appropriate, were not owned by the plants, but rather are props used to recreate the feeling of a lived-in home. But what about the artwork, the paintings, prints, and bronzes that adorn these rooms? The answer to this question is a little more complicated. In our collection, we have a combination of pieces owned by Tom and Olive Plant, pieces that are authentic substitutions for missing originals, recent donations to the Castle Preservation Society, and what we like to call mystery pieces. Most of the works of art we know were owned by Tom and Olive are typically found in the library. These include prints featuring Napoleonic battles, a bronze bust of Napoleon after a sculpture by Antonio Canova, and a bronze cast after Swiss sculptor Vincenzo Vela's 1866 work, The Last Moments of Napoleon. Another work that was owned by the plants is a tapestry, similar in style to many Belgian tavern scenes that hangs just inside the library to the left. We know these works were owned by the plants because they appear in historic photos of the house, taken by George Perry in the 1920s and 1930s. These photos are invaluable, as they also show us what was once here and is no longer. Thanks to the tireless work of members of our curatorial committee, many of these pieces have been identified and several authentic substitutions have been acquired. For instance, just inside the main entrance hangs a framed print of West Country Mails at the Gloucester Coffee House Piccadilly. This is a print after a work by James Pollard, an English painter and draftsman who specialized in coaching and sporting scenes. Near the organ console in the main hall, guests will find two additional prints that stand in for plant-owned pieces, both after works by Walter Dendy Sadler, an English painter born in 1854, known for capturing the daily life pursuits of his subjects. A third print hung above the organ console depicts E.A.S. Douglas's 1895 work to the railway station. This too was acquired in recent years to replace a print owned by the plants. Back in the library, we find a set of bronze bookends titled Hide and Seek, depicting a pair of children, a boy and a girl, each with arms extended out and back as if holding up the books that are to be stacked against it. Like the prints, these bookends are an authentic substitution for the set owned by the plants that appear in the Perry photos but were no longer in the castle's collection. Moving upstairs, we find a number of lovely paintings that are well suited for this home. We only have one historic photo of the second floor showing Tom Plant's portrait above the stairs. This photo also shows us one of the three Thomas Moran paintings owned by the plants, Point Lobos, Monterey, California. This painting was later moved to the library and today is part of the collection of the White House. Unfortunately, unless other images of the second floor surface, we simply won't know how the plants decorated this space. The paintings that beautify this space now are mostly recent donations to the Castle Preservation Society, including two by a famed painter of the White Mountain School, William Pascal. The two Pascal paintings depict the same view of the Belknap Mountains, one in the summer months and one with fall foliage. Mixed in with the recent donations, there are also a few mystery pieces in the second floor hallways, prints and paintings that have long adorned these halls and may or may not have been owned by the plants. These include three gauche paintings in the style of the 19th century Neapolitan school of painters, each depicting the Bay of Naples with Mount Vesuvius erupting in the background. Based on the period and the style, it is likely these were owned by the plants. However, without photos or other documentation, we can't say that with certainty. The art of Lucknow is, without a doubt, a varied assortment. Originals, reproductions, replacements, gifts, and curiosities for which we may never have the full story. Although sometimes overshadowed by the architecture of the house or beauty of the natural setting, the pieces that decorate the castle's interior are worth a look. On your next visit to the castle, take a few moments to focus on the artwork and let us know what piece is your favorite.